it looks like Earth. Planet Burbank. The Insomniac Museum. This is Mike Stout. I'm a designer at Insomniac Games. Hi, welcome to the Insomniac Museum. Here you'll see some of the great things that never quite made it into the game, and you'll learn a little bit about life here at Insomniac Games. Hey Mike! <laughs> Thank you for watching my videos. <laughs> Mike, love you. Mike, 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 I love you. Hi Mike. Anyway, yeah. Uh, so, uh, cool. Hello, my name is Brian Allgaier, the design director at Insomniac Games. These floating spherical monstrosities are the elusive gravity spheres, which were originally going to be included in Silver City. They proved to be too difficult, and a bit nauseating, to be included. They are preserved here for posterity. Swing shot up to try running around one, and then swing shot again to get off the sphere. Okay, cool. Whoa! I like to think that this inspired uh, Super Mario Galaxy. <laughs> Now, how do I get off? Ha, <laughs> you can't. Oh, okay. That's pretty cool, though. I like that. No, but that probably did inspire Galaxy. Yeah, I like how you can also go on the walls anywhere in this place. It's pretty cool. I do like that. So, um, yeah. This is the Insomniac Museum. Insomniac Games Museum. <laughs> Hi there. My name's Tim Trespass. I'm a gameplay programmer here at Insomniac Games. I'm a Leo from Washington, D.C. I like anime and shiny objects. This car was originally going to be included in the battle with the giant robot on Snivlack. Unfortunately, its lack of heavy weaponry proved its bane. It now calls the Insomniac Museum its home. Yeah, I think I'm going to put this in last. Oh my god. Tool. Wee! This is quite awesome. I like this thing. So, this is the museum. It's it is pretty cool. I think I'm um, Tim Trespass. I may be wrong. He might have created the Trespasser in the first game because it's called Trespass. I may be wrong. Hiya! This is Oliver Wade, the animation director here at Insomniac Games. The three-headed Hydra was a big cut from Ratchet and Clank One. It was originally intended as a mini-boss on Pokitaru. Ratchet battled this beast whilst riding a boat through blowfish-infested waters. However, it didn't end up being that much fun at all. Fair enough. Hmm, pretty cool. Pretty cool indeed. Whee! So, uh, what else you got for me? I noticed it's got loads of stuff from Ratchet and Clank 1 and 2, so, yeah. My name is Chris Town, and I'm a tester here at Insomniac Games. Here at Insomniac, we're so hopped up on caffeine that we bounce <laughs> off the walls! You can do the same with these gravity rats! <laughs> oh, great. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> oh, that is good, yeah. <laughs> oh. That's pretty awesome. Right. Where next? This place is actually really big, so I may get lost, but I, I do love this place because it's cool. Oh, I know what this is! This Maybe Tony might say something here. Hi, my name is Tony Garcia and yep. I'm a programmer in Insomniac Games. This wonder of an explosion was created especially for Ratchet and Clank 2. Its extreme versatility allowed it to creep into many different places in the game. You'll even see it in the electrolyzer puzzles. Stand on the blue pad to make your own explosions. I knew it because he had a lot of work with the explosion effects. Ooh, okay. Making many more rocks. Let's make it like the highest as possible and see what happens. This is pretty cool. More stuff. More. Spider lag, go. <laughs> And change the color. That is pretty awesome. More. Come on, that is pretty awesome. You have to admit. More. I want to see see it change into white. 
think it'll change into white. Yeah, it will. I quite like that as it is. That's pretty cool. Look at that. Blinding. Tony Garcia here. This little demonstration allows you to create your own shot effect. Using the magic of debug technology, you can edit the shot's size and color, and then watch the bandit shoot it at the block man. Don't feel too sorry for the block man, though. He's evil. <laughs> oh, that's great. Okay. I'm gonna make it really painful for block man. Oh, I knew, I knew Tony would be there. Cause he did do, he did say that he did a lot of the effects here. So I hope this hurts you. I really do. I hope this is the most painful thing that Blockman has ever felt in his entire life. This is super cool, by the way. How long ago was this though? It's eight or so years. Maybe you can make the trail bigger at the back, which is pretty cool. And thickness, let's make it bigger. Kill him in a whip. Oh yes, let's do that. Just make this the most painful thing you ever see in your life. Oh, I quite like that. Texture rot, let's bring it down. Tail a bit longer. Thread length a little bit longer. Texture a bit higher. Higher. Oh man. Let's get rid of that. Whoa. They all have different stuff, it's pretty cool. I what was that? Was it I like that. Looks harmless, but in the end oh the colour oh wow, you can literally change anything. It's very cool. It's very, very cool. I like that because it looks like nothing's happening, but it's secretly the most powerful thing on the planet. Now I distinctly remember one thing um, in this area and I think I know where it is. I'm going to do that last because it's the thing I'm impressed by the most. Hello, this is Pedro Hastinas. I'm a gameplay programmer at Insomniac Games. This little widget was used to test our new chunk system. We lovingly call it the corn system. Notice how all the breakables in this game are much prettier? Well that's corn working hard for you. Give it a whack and see what it does. Okay. Cool. Mike Stout here. Fear the random robot NPC. This robot never made it into Ratchet and Clank 1 because of the fabled Day of Poultry, when chickens swarmed over our offices and pecked the computer, holding this mechanical darling to pieces. We were able to retrieve her eventually, though. What? Really? Is that a thing? <laughs> Seriously? What? <laughs> oh, cool, it responds. Oh my god. <laughs> is that actually something that happens? That's great if it is. Ooh, I like this. This is pretty cool. Oh, it has guns. Yeah. It even has guns. It's pretty cool. Hello, I'm Carl Grande, the QA manager here at Insomnia Games. This gadget was originally intended for Ratchet and Clank 1. Unfortunately, it didn't make the cut, and so never saw the light of day. It now makes its home here at Insomniac Museum, gone but not forgotten. God bless it. Can we drive it? No. Okay, cool. It's pretty cool though. I can walk through it. Yes! Love walking through things. You can see why I like this place. Chris here. This helmet was the original model for the Hollow Guys gadget in Ratchet and Clank 1. It was eventually changed to the handheld model you see in the finished game for reasons unknown. However, we once again suspect it was due to the squirrels with hacksaws. <laughs> oh god, this place is the best. I think the one in Ratchet and Clank 3 is better. I can't remember though. Oh god, there's an electrolyzer puzzle. Damn you, Mike. Ooh, what's this? 
My name is Corey Stockton and I'm a designer here at Insomniac Games. This monstrous robotic squid was created for one of the Ratchet & Clank 2 prototype levels. Since that level never made it into the finished game, however, neither did poor Squiddy. Oh, Squiddy! Yeah, okay. Um, I think I'll go outside last. Oh, fire effects. This is probably also uh, Tony. Tony Garcia here. Yeah. Using these three blue pads, you can edit the three particle effects in the center of the room. Go ahead, play around with them. You can achieve some truly great effects this way. Cool. I probably won't spend too much time on this because... Oh, whoa! Whoa, 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 whoa. Because I probably won't... Like, spend too much time on this. But, you know, I, it's cool to know. Here's some of the green. Rotation speed. Let's go. Texture. Let's see if we can get the amazing effect I want. Okay, I don't want that. Look like at that. That looks quite nice. So I guess this. Oh, you can edit. Ah, I see. It edits that thing. And then this one must edit the blue one in the middle. Yeah, it does. Okay, cool. I like that. That's quite nice. Yeah, the Insomniac Museum is just one of the greatest things about the Ratchet and Clank series. Whoever came up with the idea to actually include these, utterly genius. Can I kill Blockman? Die, Blockman! Oh, I, I killed a breakable. Can I kill him? No. What did I kill? I killed something. I'm not entirely sure what I killed. I killed something. Um. Right. I should probably go. Uh. Yeah. Let's go to this side. Oh, what's this? Hi, my name is Sean Whistler, and I'm a tester here at Insomniac Games. Don't worry, Ratchet. You wouldn't have had to fight this monster even if he did make it into the game. This giant bug ship was intended to act as scenery only, flying from place to place to ensure high detail on buildings, while leaving the play area open. Cool, okay. That's quite nice. Wish it didn't have the shake effect now in that stupid thing. Um, <laughs> uh, right. We've had this, haven't we? Hey, it's Tim. This car was originally going to be included. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've had that. The awesome vehicle. Yeah, I remember that. Wee. Oh. Wee again. Oh, I know what that is. That's last. That's for last. You don't get to see what that is. I'm really impressed by it. Greetings, this is Oliver Wade, the animation director at Insomniac Games doing an atrocious British accent. This is the original Gadgetron vendor from Ratchet & Clank 1. The official reason it was cut had something to do with saving memory. The real reason has a lot to do with squirrels, hacksaws, and our lawyers. I can say no more, because I am no longer able to do this accent. <laughs> oh god, I love this place. It's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Hey, it's Tim. This monstrosity was intended to be a boss battle fought on the jet ski gadget. Seeing as the jet ski never made it in the Ratchet and Clank, however, neither did this boss. May he rest in pieces. Pieces? Uh. Sean here. This guy was originally intended to be an enemy in the ill fated jet ski level that never made it into Ratchet and Clank 1. A moment of silence, please, for this gentle giant, torn down in his prime. Okay. Silence will be had. Silence has been had. Let's go on. What have we got in here? We've done that cutscene. Ah, oh, we're back here, okay. I will do a quick check to make sure we haven't missed anything after, but, you know. Corey here. You may recognize this drill from Ratchet and Clank 1. Oh yeah! It's held by a large construction worker who gives you a lump of veritanium. This is originally a weapon called the Revolverator. Really? Ratchet would strike enemies with it and then spin them over his head. 
Let's pick up what else did say? You may recognize uh, this with the draw, but unfortunately this ended up uh, leaving Ratchet open for attack and also required a lot of resources to pull off, so it was cut. Okay. I imagine they probably cut some of the um, lines said by people because of like memory space or whatnot. I do not blame them for said such things. Blockman. Hey, this is Peter again. This dummy was created to test the new reaction system which we added to Ratchet and Clank 2. With this system, enemies would always be sure to react appropriately to being damaged without a ton of hassle. Go ahead and hit him. He won't mind. Are you sure? Are you really sure? Alright. Die! Stupid bitch! <laughs> nope, wrong thing. Wrong thing again. Die! <laughs> that was fun. Die! <laughs> what is in here? Whoa! Whoa, that's freaking creepy! Oh wait, I've got an idea. I've got the best idea. The best idea has been had. Ah! Ah, okay, that wasn't the best idea. I was wrong. Ah, looks like an enemy. It actually does look like an enemy, like a snake type thing. Create this, Insomniac! Ratchet Clank 29, go! Hey, this is Peter again. This was created to test screen buffer effects. Screen buffer effects are used to create things like distortion bubbles and heat hazing. This, however, ends up looking like a hall of mirrors. Can you guess why? Because it's a camera, um, behind you. But it's that screen right there is the camera behind you, and it's designed to follow you. But because it's there, it sees what we see, so therefore it creates that. I guessed why, and I think I got it correct. I wonder, can you destroy the Hall of Mirrors? No, didn't think so. Don't like how it turns with me. What happens if I touch it? Oh! Interesting. Um, okay. I think I've been everywhere. Though I've been wrong before, so we'll just have a quick check around. Did that room. Did that room. Definitely did that. Yeah, we definitely did that, I remember that. Yeah, so... I think I better show you the coolest thing before we go outside. Hi, I'm Leslie Matheson. I'm a designer here at Insomniac Games. This was intended to be the water system for Ratchet and Clank. However, as even this little patch of water taxes the game engine to its limits, a modified and severely optimized form was what eventually made it into the game. To see this patch in action, press circle. This thing right here is one of the coolest things in the game. It could probably be done with the PS3's um, graphics, but it's truly beautiful, as you can see. As you can see, this thing does look absolutely stunning, and it blows me away every time. It really does look stunning. Looks absolutely incredible. I I imagine. Uh, why why can't I charge? Does it switch me to the. No. It won't. It wouldn't let me do anything. It wouldn't let me use my wrench either. I guess that's what the thing does. Huh. Yeah, I, you probably aren't that impressed. It's like, oh, there's, there's no different PS3 grabbing. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> it looks amazing. Right, electrolyzer. How difficult will you be? That's the question. Oh my god. <laughs> he said that jokingly. I got lucky there. I got very lucky. But look how many green things there are. Hee! 
So, outside. Oh yeah, we get in we get to go in there. <laughs> That's right. So interruptions. Hey, this is Peter again. These teleporters were originally intended to go into several of the levels. Due to time constraints, however, they were eventually cut. Oh. Oh, well, I guess that was another door. Fair enough. I was gonna say, what's with that door? But it's the same one. That actually looks pretty cool. <laughs> hmm. Brian Allgaier here. These escalating rows of blocks were used when we were in the early stages of creating Ratchet and Clank 1. They were used to test Ratchet's jump heights and jump distances to see which would be the most fun. Right, so... I can easily go up here this way. Uh, let's see... Just how high I can get. With it. So I reckon I can probably jump, double jump there, yeah, or so. Maybe that? No. I can grab on. I can do this, however. Can I do it with four? Probably do it with all of them, actually. Or maybe not, actually. Maybe three is the limit. Let's see if I can do it with two. I don't know if I can. Just not. So, that's that explained. Now, let's see what. Jumping's like pretty much walk across that. <laughs> Jump in. Jump in. Now I need to double jump. I meant to double jump, but that didn't work. Uh, yeah, there's that. Hmm. I wonder what the limit actually is. I can make that. I if I can make it like this. Mm, just not. I wonder if I can make it a different way. Like that. I nearly can. Oh, I think that was due to me not being a deer. Okay. Yeah. So that's interesting. Pretty cool. Yeah, I quite like this area. You know. Ah, that's what it was. So I was able to get up to 5 meters. 5 meters is the limit. Okay, interesting. Uh, what was this? Brian Allgaier here. These walls, which range from narrow to wide, were used to test wall kick distances for the original Ratchet and Clank. Ah! Yeah, so this one's definitely doable. Obviously. Now, this one. Yeah. Whee! I wonder if one of them won't work. Probably won't. Soon find out. But you can still do it with that. Next one. Can still do it. That's pretty good. Quite far. Two more to go. I imagine the last one won't work. Or if it does, it will be very limited. It'll be very. It'll take a while. Yeah, you can do it. It just takes a long time. I will make it, I promise thee. Yes! I did it! It was my destiny and I did it! Okay. So, um, what's over here? I don't know what this is for. Oh well. That's pretty cool. Um, right, we've got to go over there. Brian Allgaier here. These ramps get steeper and steeper as you go on. They were used to test how Ratchet's feet respond to different floor angles. It also helped establish that a 45 degree angle was the sharpest that Ratchet should be able to walk up. Hmm. 45 degree, eh? Soon find out. So what's with the random blue platform? I'll travel that in a second. 
Huh. So it is. I bet I can do better though. I want to go higher. No, what are you doing? What about charge boots? Or not? There's absolutely no way of getting up there. But there's stuff up there. There's actually no way of getting up there. Seriously, there's a door. Come on. There's, a, there's an actual door. Unless on this blue platform there's some kind of teleporter, which would be great by the way. Teleport me to the higher levels, that'd be nice. Please. Because what's the point of this otherwise? There doesn't seem to be one. Although I think I did see something a second ago, but I'll look at that in a minute. Yeah, what is the point of this otherwise if there's nothing at the end? I'm just wondering. Maybe for decoration, but you know. Yeah, what's the point of this thing? <laughs> Invisible? No, okay, no, no clue. Cool. Um, I swear I saw a door. I did see a door. I did see absolutely nothing, secret wall. <laughs> okay. It's weird that there's just a random archway. So can you, is there literally nothing up there? There's absolutely nothing. I'll come back and do something if I'm told otherwise, but... It's a bit sad. Oh. Less exciting when you come back in. <laughs> hey, there's me. It's the camera I'm looking at. It's the camera looking at me and it's portrayed through there. It's cool, isn't it? So, uh, that's the Insomniac Museum. That was it. And I am lost. Uh, um... This way? Oh crap. Yes, I think it is. Yes, it is. Mike! Mike Stout here. Hi, welcome to the Insomniac Museum. Here you'll see some of the great things that never quite made it into the game, and you'll learn a little bit about life here at Insomniac Games. I did learn. I learned a lot. I learned that there were chickens and squirrels with hacksaws and things that I couldn't get to even though I could see them and they taunt me forever and yeah I learned loads of things thank you Mike okay so as you can see I'm back from uh, I'm, I'm back here after I finished the game um, I just thought I'd point out that it sort of looks like Insomniac Games must come but whatever um, yeah the reason I'm back here I, I forgot to show off something there was something I did miss outside. Please say I don't have to redo that. I do have to redo that. You're too kind, game. Um, also, there is another way. I did say the um, the fountain, obviously, and uh, change your time to 2 p.m. I think that's what I said. Yeah, it's not 2 p.m. It's, it's 3. It's not 2 p.m. It's 2 a.m. It's not 2 a.m. either. It's, it's 3 a.m. So, yeah. Um, I apologize for getting that wrong, but whatever. Ah, yeah. oh, holy balls! Ah, oh, holy crap! Okay, right. So, um, yeah. Round here, I thought there was something, but I couldn't see anything. So I was just like, "Yeah, there's nothing there, I guess." I guess that's it. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, no, there is something over here, and I didn't check it. Uh, which, which is why I felt stupid after I saw Useless Podcast do this. I was like, "Oh my god, how did I forget this?" Um, but yeah, that's an interesting thing. Uh, I, f I want to say it's over here. I want to say it's over here somewhere. It's over here, or at least... Oh, yeah, it's over... There it is. Right there. There's a ship there. Let's let's take a look at it, shall we? Scan out the... Uh, that. Zoom in. It's our ship. Why? Because, apparently, there has to be one ship in each level, otherwise the level doesn't run properly. Don't ask me why, it just does. What's this? I'll activate that after. Um, 
Hi, I'm Leslie Matheson. I'm a designer here at Insomniac Games. This gravity tower was created to test the Magna Boots in Ratchet & Clank 1. However, with the new gravity boots that Ratchet gets in Ratchet & Clank 2, this tower is much more fun. Can you imagine scaling this tower while walking at half of Ratchet's speed? Yeah, we thought so. <laughs> oh, that is a very, very good point. So I'm gonna go this way, because why not? Um, and you will see how awesome this is. Because it, this is pretty cool. It basically tests the limits of everything in this in this area, and I, I do like the gravity tower. I can't believe I completely forgot about this way. Because I remember before going to Insomniac Museum, there's a bit to the right, there's a bit around the building, and when I look back over the footage, I was just like, I didn't go to the right, oh my god, I forgot about that completely, so yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, here's the, here's the Tower of Death. It's cool, isn't it? It's a tower. How do we off this thing? Uh, and he never left the tower again, literally, in this scenario. Um, no, no, he did. Oh, I can't go on the side. Sad face. And that's how you leave. I think. Actually, now that I look at that, I'm sorry, I have to look at this now. I, I'm sorry, I've... Curiosity is going to kill me. Right, this just leads to that side. I want to get to the Sphere of Doom. Because I've seen something interesting. Something that's interesting me. What is it? It's interesting is the fact that I can actually get on top of the roof. I'm definitely able to get on that roof. I, I'm positive you can get on that roof. Just gotta find the right angle. It's further up. I am positive you can get on this roof. See the roof? I'm getting on it. See this roof? This roof is my own roof. I'm on this roof. Ah! Uh, ah! Ah! There you go. Roof. I technically got on the roof. Okay, let's go back outside because I technically wasn't done. Um, well, actually, there was another thing, obviously, you didn't see it. Uh, the teleporting thing, I'm not actually sure what that is, if I'm being perfectly honest. Um, but I'm gonna go around the other side, just to see if there's anything more. I believe there is. I believe there is one extra thing, apart from that one teleport that we missed. Which, there's a teleport there, but there was another one, obviously. But yeah, apart from that, I think there was one extra thing, which I can't get around that way, so I'm going around this way. I think there's one more thing. So I'll go into teleporter last. Um, but, uh, yeah. Let's check, shall we? This is super slow. <laughs> sort of. I wish he continued his momentum, but he doesn't. I'm sure there's one more thing. Yep, because there's something down here. Boosting. Nothing here. Yep, there's one guy. I cannot remember who it is. But, apparently the story behind that is he wanted to be in the Insomniac Museum, but he didn't want to say anything. So this is him hidden on the furthest corner of the of the map. And yeah, it's pretty cool. It's, it's pretty cool. I, I was always confused about that as a kid. I was like, why is there a person here with no help message? I guess something went wrong? Glitch maybe? I don't know. Confuse me. Now, it nearly makes sense. Yeah. Nearly. Very nearly. So, teleport pad. The last thing in Ratchet and Clank 2. This excites me so. And this teleports me here. In the front. Okay. This is Mike Stout. I'm a designer at Insomniac Games. Hi, welcome to the Insomniac Museum. Here you'll see some of the great things that never quite made it into the game, and you'll learn a little bit about life here at Insomniac Games. I certainly did. Thank you everyone who worked on this game. Thank you Mike and Tony for doing the developer commentary again. Check out the channel. It's worth it. Ah, oh, it doesn't matter. You know what? There's no better way to end than to do one thing. What is that one thing? Well, waste the most expensive ammo in the game. 
Goodbye. 40,000 bolts. Goodbye. Goodbye.